Okay guys, so before we go any further with the texturing, and eventually I'd like to get to some lighting, but before we get that far, there's a problem that we need to fix. And if we don't address the problem now, we're going to have to do it at some point before we get to the animating. So the problem lies with the emitter that we set up earlier that's being used to emit those uh, shells that are interacting with the floor object that's coming out of the side of the gun. Now the problem isn't the case shell and the problem is not the dynamics. All of that is working just fine. The problem is the emitter object. So this emitter, for a lack of a better word, is a basic dumbed down version of a standard thinking particle emitter. And what I want to do is, seeing as how we've already created a controller for the muzzle flashing to come on and off and the barrel speed, I would like to link this emitter to this muzzle flash controller. That way when we turn the controller on, the emitter will turn on as well and then when we flip the switch for the controller, the emitter will turn off because right now it's just kind of, if we hit play, it's just emitting particles. However, the problem with this emitter, seeing as how it's a dumbed down version, is that if we go over here to the particle tab for it, you'll notice that there are several attributes here that cannot be keyframed, such as the birth rate editor, render, and the start and stop emission values. And the reason I can tell that is because there, there is no black circle next to these values, which means they cannot be keyframed. So that tells me that this emitter is always going to be on, or the stop emission cannot be keyframed, so we can only take this value up to a certain number, and then after that, there's no way to turn that emitter back on. So this option of using this emitter linked to this controller, that's just not going to work. So we're going to have to get rid of this emitter, and we're going to have to jump into some thinking particle in order to do this. So we want to save the casing, so I'm going to drop that out of the hierarchy there. And I'm just going to delete the fracture object. Okay, now in order to set this up to work properly, we're going to have to do some Espresso work, Thinking Particle, and we're going to have to integrate MoGraph with it as well so that we can use the rigid body. Okay, so the first thing we want to set up is the MoGraph. So we're just going to use a cloner object. And then what we want to do is set up a thinking particle emitter. Now, we could take uh, a lot of time to go through that and set all that up, but fortunately for us, Maxon was nice enough to provide us with some presets. And in order to get to those presets, you need to go to your content browser. So to get to that, of course, uh, again, I've got mine docked here in a tab, but you need to go to Window, Content Browser. And here we have a very large list of a lot of different presets. So what you want to do is you want to go to the presets list here, open that up and expand it. Go down to Thinking Particles. Go to your Emitter folder. And then we want to scroll down. And here is our TP Standard Emitter. And we want to double click that. And when you double click it, it will add a standard emitter to the scene. So we'll go back to the Objects tab here for the Object Manager. And now we have our TP Standard Emitter object. So we'll click on the Thinking Particle tabs for it. And now here we have all of these different values. And they can all be keyframed, which is exactly what we were uh, wanting in the first place. Okay, so now what we want to do is set up the Cloner object. So we'll click on it, and we need to change the mode to Object. And it's asking us here in the link box, what do we want to clone? So we're going to go over here to Objects, Thinking Particles, Thinking Particle Settings. Now for those of you that are using R12, I believe that the Thinking Particle Settings box can be found under the Simulation tab. So I'm using 11.5. And for those of you using 11.5 and under, this can be found under Objects, Thinking Particle, Thinking Particle Settings. But for those of you with R12, this will be found under the Simulation 
up here. Now, of course, uh, I don't have simulation because that started in R12, so that's where you need to find that option at. Okay, so moving along, what we need to do is take this particle group here, all. We need to click it and drag it down here to the object link. And what we need to do now is take our casing object and we need to drag it and make it a child of the cloner object. We'll go back up and click on the standard emitter and we need to grab the all particle group again and drag that into the particle group link for the emitter. And we can click off of that. And now for the shape here, we need to grab the casing and drag that into the shape link. All right, so I'm going to back out and we need to pull this emitter up and over. And now when we hit play, now we got our bullet casings that are flying out, but they're in a straight line, so we're going to need to make some more adjustments here. But before we do, you'll also notice that since this is a thinking particle emitter, it is also emitting thinking particles in the form of those little dots, those little white dots. So we need to go back to those thinking particle settings and we need to change the view type from ticks or your may uh, your setting may be to something else but we need to change it to none and that will get rid of that and what we need to do is start making some adjustments to this so the first thing I want to do is take the spread angle option and we want to go up to 25 and the diameter needs to go up let's try a value of about 40 and you can't see it right now we need to hit uh, we need to do something in the timeline so either hit back or hit play to refresh it to auto update it and now you can see it's in the form of a circle and we'll hit play and there goes our casings now of course there's no dynamics to it right now so we need to right click on the cloner object and give it a MoGraph rigid body tag and I'm just going to take the bounce to point one and the friction to one hit play again and there we go now we got our bullet casings being emitted and they're all interacting with the floor and that looks pretty good so now we need to make some more adjustments here so we'll click on the uh, the TP standard emitter object and we need to change the emitter type to shot now if we were to hit play we get a ton of these bullet casings and that's just way too much so we need to take this particle number down to a value of one and we'll go back to the beginning of the timeline and then hit play again and that looks a lot better now these aren't going out far enough so we need to change the speed so we'll go here into the speed and we'll take it up to about 450 hit play again and there we go. Now we've got some bullet casings that are looking a little better now and we've got some speed to them. Now we need to change a few things for the shape of this emitter. Now it's currently a circle. So to change that we need to open up the Expresso for the emitter. So we'll double click on the Expresso tag and we need to come over here to the PStorm node and we need to click that. The attributes will now pop up for it and the type we need to change that to a rectangle. so we need to hit play then go back to auto update that so now you can see the change and now we need to position this emitter over here by the port so what we can do is take the TP emitter and drop it in as a child of the shell port and then we can use the reset PSR command that will take it up to the port and we can just leave it as a child of the port that's fine but what we do want to change is the direction because right now the z-axis is pointing back and it needs to be pointing out the side so we'll just grab the coordinates here and we'll rotate that 90 degrees and then we can just kind of pull that out a little bit we'll hit play okay and of course right now it's a little too big so what I'm going to do is go to the emitter here, 
go to the thinking particle settings and change the diameter down to about 25 and for now that's that's gonna look okay I guess we're, we're not really gonna be close up to that so there's you know it obviously this shell here looks like it's kind of coming out a little crooked and uh, beyond the actual port but uh, these are gonna be coming out pretty fast so you're not really gonna be able to actually see that so that looks pretty good and now when the gun will move that particle emitter will move with it okay so now what we want to do is link this emitter to our flash controller because when we turn that on we want the emitter to be on but as soon as we flip the switch to turn it off well you can see the emitter is still going now we could come over here and we could take this particle number and it does have a black circle so that means we could make a keyframe and just take this down to uh, a value of zero and by doing that that will take the emitter and turn it off so see when I hit play there's nothing coming out of it so a value of zero means it's off however since we're going between a value of one and zero this is really going to work out for us and it's really going to simplify the controller so what we want to do is open up the Expresso for our barrel object and we already have the controller here and we already have a condition switch as well so basically all we have to do is take that standard emitter object drag it in and I'm just going to expand it to make it a little bigger. We'll go to the input side and we want to go down to the thinking particles menu and we want to choose the particle number because the particle number is the value here that we want to keyframe in order to turn it on and off. So the switch here for our barrel, I'm sorry, yeah, not for the barrel, but the barrel object which has the muzzle flash controller the switch basically is going between a value of 0 and 1. 0 means it's off, 1 means it's on. And seeing as how the uh, emitter, the particle number, is going between a value of 0 and 1, all we have to do is link the output to that particle number value. And now, when we hit play, the emitter is off, but as soon as we turn this on, now that emitter starts emitting just like that so we'll hit stop and there's all of our casings and it looks like we may need to take the ground and make it a little bigger so I'm just going to scale up the ground object that we have here just to prevent any of those unwanted shells from kind of going off the edge okay so now we have fixed the problem with that emitter and we've created a standard TP emitter that's linked with the uh, the uh, MoGraph rigid body through the cloner object and we have linked all that to our Expresso controller so we're making uh, pretty good progress here with this okay guys so there's one more issue that I want to fix and it involves the way the muzzle flashlights work with the control switch now to demonstrate the point I'm gonna make a couple of keyframes here so that you can understand the problem and what I want to do to solve it so the gun right now if we hit play is off notice that it's not flashing and the shells are not being ejected from the side but you'll notice that if we hit render the muzzle flashlight is on so that means when we go to animate this if we make some keyframes here and we turn the gun off but if we turn the gun off on a keyframe where the light is on then it's going to remain on so let me show you what I mean here I'm gonna make a keyframe here I'm gonna turn the gun on okay there's the gun it's on make a keyframe on frame zero and let's stop right there let's see let's go to frame 30 and we'll make a keyframe there and then we'll jump forward one frame to turn it off no, but notice the light is on 
So let's go ahead and turn the switch off, and when we turned it off, the light still stays on. So we'll make a keyframe. So now the gun is off, but if we were to render this, you see what I'm saying? The light is still on, and that light needs to be turned off when the switch is turned off. So what we need to do is go back to our Espresso and get rid of the flip-flop node and replace it with a compare node. So let's go into the Espresso and let's just click these lines to deselect them and we need to drag the flip-flop node out of the way or you can delete it if you want to. We'll go to new node, Espresso, logic, compare. And we need to make two of these so I'm going to control click and drag to duplicate it and you need one compare node for each one of your lights. So if you're using more than two lights, say for example three, then you're going to need three compare nodes. If you've got four lights, four compare nodes. So in the input two, for each one of these compare nodes, we need to change the value to one. So we'll click on the other compare node and change that input to value to one. And basically what this is saying is zero and one means on and off. So if it's a value of zero, it's on. If it's a value of one, it's off. So what we can do is now connect these uh, from the math node here to the input one, because input two is already being supplied with our value of one. And now we can take our output to its corresponding light. So now we'll go back and I'm just going to keep the keyframes that I had here earlier and now when we hit play now you notice the gun is off and also if you notice we're getting a much faster flashing rate with that muzzle flash it's a whole lot faster so now no matter where you make your keyframe at say for example you want to go over here to a frame where the light is on and now we can turn the gun off and notice when we clicked it off now the gun really turns off versus the flip-flop node which had the light stain on so now we have addressed that issue and now no matter where we stop the light at it's always going to remain off so now I'm just going to go ahead and hit control s to save this scene so to recap what we've done is we have fixed the emitter so that we can link it to our muzzle flash controller. That way the emitter will be turned off when the gun turns off. And then we address the issue with the flash remaining on on certain frames. If you happen to keyframe it to turn off on the frame when, the, when those lights are actually still turned on. So now no matter where in the timeline you turn the gun off, as soon as you hit that switch, it's going to turn those lights off. So that concludes this part, and now since we have addressed these issues, now in the next part we can continue with the texturing, and we'll move on to the lighting as well.